Hey, son, how you doing? I'm doing good. How's school? Oh, school's going okay. Classes aren't too bad. I'm staying fit in. I think I'm doing okay. Good. Um, hey, I got an idea for a project for you. Okay. So, yeah, okay, so I was wondering, do you think it's possible that you can build a lightsaber that can change colors? Like, I'm talking, like, maybe, like, one that you can make it, like, go from, like, blue to red. Are you up to the challenge? Mm -hmm. Challenge accepted. Took that shot! Dad? Dad? Not again. Hi, I'm Gene Cavanasis. We're going to come back and build another lightsaber, but this time we're going to try to change it up a little bit. So, let's get started. I want to build a lightsaber, and I want the hilt to be more uh, smooth and a uh, uh, a simpler design that might be fun. I also want to make it out of predominantly metal. So I picked up a 12 inch extension of one and a half inch uh, copper tubing that's got a chrome plating on it. It has a flared out end as well as a fitting on the end that we'll be able to use to contain the batteries in. And I think I'll probably end up spraying that black. I also picked up a cap, a one and a half inch end cap from the local hardware store. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to take that and combine it into the base as I put this on and that'll help to build the bottom and retain the, the handle or the batteries into that. That gives you plenty of grip room. Now the uh, the hilt really only needs to be somewhere around 9 to 10 inches max. So I'm going to go 9 and a half and cut the tubing right here. But I also think to make it even more interesting, I'm going to cut the tubing on an angle and then reuse this, slide, this side, slice it at the narrow point and sleeve it back down. Now, finishing the edges of this shouldn't be too bad because if it's actually made out of copper, you can file it, smooth it, and not worry about it rusting either. So, you know, I'm pretty excited about how that's going to work. I have some scrap Schedule 40 pipe. I'm going to be using this for some of the interior or internal pieces of it, just mainly because it is so close to fitting and being a, a very good snug fit with a little help on that. Also, I picked up a one inch a piece of polycarbonate tubing. This will be for the blade and also utilizing the Schedule 40 pipe. This is a very good fit. So that's going to help also to build and contain the uh, the overall lightsaber. Then as I've used in the past this uh, shark bite material which always feeds up inside of here very easily. So that all these components are going to help me to get it started. So for now we're going to start with the basic hilt on this. Now I also picked up some machine screws that will also hold, help to hold some of the parts in and to give it more of a, of a cooler machined out look as well. If you like these videos please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell for notification for new videos coming out. I just want to do this tight enough to hold it and not crush it. Okay, after I cut that, notice how it opens that up easier and makes it easier to slide on to the rest of the handle. Using some painter's tape, I'm going to mark where I want the on and off button to be placed. Once I drill a pilot hole in there, I'm going to use a step bit to try to size this hole up to the size I need. 
I'm going to have to do a little bit of making it more oval shaped so my rotary tool will help that out. I also found a, a PVC sleeve that's going to work perfect for expanding that and fitting on the, the hilt. A little black paint and it'll be perfect. Also using some Schedule 40, I'm going to sleeve that down inside the metal hilt and mark it off where I want it cut. Now I'm leaving enough on there to trim out the on and off button as well. Get a little sanding done on this, smoothed out, and that's going to be ready for some paint as well. So let's go paint. All right, I'm going to use this uh, Fusion by Croylon. While we wait for the paint to dry, I'm going to uh, sand and clean up the sleeve I cut off. And now that the paint's dry, let's start putting some of this together. I can sleeve that over. And I like the way it opens on the back side. I think that's going to sleeve down perfectly on the rest of the hilt. And I can sleeve that down, position it exactly where I want it, and I like where that's going. Now, the other piece of Schedule 40, I'll fit that in. It's a little bit loose, so I'm going to mark where the plug is going to fit in. And once again with the rotary tool, I'm going to kind of carve that down to make room for it. Now I'm going to fix that little bit of sloppiness by using some gaffer's tape. You could also do this with um, duct tape or anything you want. I put two strips around it and that's just enough to give it that nice snug fit that I want. Now that I've got that in place, I'm going to set and mark where I want to put the machine screws on the side. So once again, I'll put some painter's tape to protect it. And then using a couple pieces of scrap 1x2s, I'm going to set on each side to make a template so I put my marks in the exact same height. Now, after measuring up where each of those go, I'm going to use a set punch just to mark and make it easier to drill the holes. Now when drilling these holes, you'll go through two pieces of metal and two pieces of the um, PVC. And I was going to use a die and tap set, but it kind of tapped itself through the PVC just fine, so I didn't need that. Now I'll be able to set that later and tighten it up as needed. I wanted to do a little more decorating on the hilt, so I masked out the base and I, using the belt sander, sanded off the chrome on the flanged part of the back. Then using some 220, sanded in that same direction, giving it kind of a cool milling effect and a nice color change with that. I think that's going to work out just fine. Now, getting into the lighting of this, the packet came with a remote, the power source, and of course the lighting strips. This is about 12 feet of lighting, so I started to roll it out, and I will use the polycarbonate tube as a measurement point, and I want to find kind of a halfway point, leaving me enough of the electrical ends to stick out, measure it up. I'm going to fold it at midpoint. Now this material comes with a marks on it that can show you exactly where to cut. So after cutting it, the LED lighting also has a sticky back material on it. So pulling back the protective tape, I'm going to stick the folded area back to itself. This takes a couple minutes because you want to take your time and not get off course with it. 
but it works really well and it holds together really, really well. Making sure that it measured out the way I want, that's going to be fine. So now I'm going to take the piece of shark bite and cut that to the same length as well. And I'm going to need to take that printing off the side of the shark bite. So I'm going to use some acetone to wipe this off. It wipes off easily. You could use anything from uh, lacquer thinner to probably even uh, nail finish remover. I'm not going to take a grocery, plastic grocery bag, white one, and trim out a couple of one inch strips of this plastic. I want to use this bag plastic because it's very thin and will work as a diffuser on the LED lights. Taking the bag and putting the lights on top, I'm going to fold the material around it and just using cellophane tape, hold it into position. Now, I'll speed this up a little bit, but you're going to move your way up it every couple inches, putting that tape down to hold it into place. Now make sure that fits into the shark bite. Looks like it's going to fit just fine. Now, the electronics part of this, I'm taking the small circuit board out of its plastic case. It's got a sensor on it for the remote and then of course its connection. Now the back has a plug that's made for a 12 volt adapter. I've got a drawer full of these and I found one that worked so it's going to be the sacrificial plug that works on this. So I'll trim that out, mark which side is positive, which side's negative. And now on the on and off switch, you'll notice it's got a copper plug for the ground, a middle, and then the on off on the end. Now you could use these automotive clips and literally just run your wiring in there and just crimp it down and you wouldn't have to solder a thing. For me though, I still need a lot of practice soldering anyway, so I'm going to solder mine. So basically you have a 9 volt battery, you have your 3 prong switch, and then the light source. So the 9 volt positive will run to the center lug, the end lug or the switch lug to the positive side. Then from that copper side to the negative and then also to the light. So as I finish up my soldering, and I'll put a little bit of heat shrink on there, I'll set the battery in and turn the switch on, test it. Looks like it's going to work. Now, placing everything together, I'm going to use the bottom of that plastic tray and tape it to the, the little circuit board and then just gently slide everything inside, leaving the battery as the last part. Pushing the switch in, that works fine. And now I still have the remote sensor that's coming out the back. So I decided I'm going to take the end piece and I'm going to drill a small hole in that and run the, uh, the sensor out of that. That's going to fit pretty good. So I'm going to now take some hot glue and just put some hot glue around the back side of this or the inside of it to hold it into place. After that dries, you can go ahead and just push that down into place and then screw down the end cap that came with the 12 inch tubing. That's going to work fine. Now I want to finish making sure that the screws are secured, the lighting works. Looks like all the colors work. That's going to be good. I think I want to add one more screw into the top of the hilt that'll help secure and lock down the blade, but also add kind of a nice looking 
piece of decoration to it. Putting that set punch on there, I'm going to go ahead and drill. And I want to drill down through the PVC, so two pieces of metal, and then the final PVC, but not into the polycarbonate piece. This part can just be hand threaded down into there, and it's nice and snug and help to uh, tighten everything up. And as a final, I took hot glue and filled in the end of the lightsaber. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please consider subscribing. Uh, you can hit that bell if you want notification when new videos come out. Please give me your comments in the comment section down below. Let me know your ideas, what you think, any suggestions. And as always, thanks again for watching. Dad?